Here's what's coming up on the show. And I stepped away to the bathroom and I couldn't have been gone for like 10 minutes. And when I came back, my wife was gone. And I'm sitting there for a bit and I seen the bartender like she kept looking at me. And after like a couple minutes that went by and my wife still, you know, she was gone. I asked the bartender, I'm like, hey, did you, um, by any chance, do you know where my wife went? Do you know if she went to the bathroom? And she just had a grin on her face. She was like, she just left. And I'm like, what do you mean? She told you she was leaving? It's like, she left with a black guy. And I'm like, my heart dropped. I couldn't like believe it. I'm like, what do you mean? This is the Venus Cuckoldress Podcast, a place to learn all things cuckolding for the curious, for the passionate, and for the sexually empowered woman who wants it all. Let's go. Welcome to the show, everyone. I'm your host, Venus. This one is another super hot confession. This is one of my all-time favorites. I fucking love it. This is a story about getting cucked for your first time and in a very surprising way. (laughs) But first, let's talk about a couple of announcements that I have coming up. So uh, the first being that I have an extra special Pillow Talk event that's happening on Tuesday, the 16th of July at 12 p.m. Pacific, that's 3 p.m. Eastern, live on Crowdcast. I will have the super sexy queen of spades herself, Brooke Blaze. She's going to be joining me, taking questions and having a great time. It is live. Make sure you catch it. Go to venuscuckoldress.com, click on the events page, and you can register there. Now, the very next day, In the Queen's Quarters community, I'm doing an interracial chat, and we're going to talk about the top 10 reasons why, it seems, interracial cuckolding is so popular, why black guys have so much sex appeal and pull with the ladies. So we're going to come up with a list, and this will be from the experience or from the perspective of cucks. So it'll be really interesting. I'm looking forward to that one. It is free. You can join me for that chat. It is live in the Queen's Quarters community. Just go to venuscuckoldress.com, click on the events page, and you'll be able to register there. So for today's show, it is a confession. And if you're not already aware, I do have a spot on my website where you can send in your confession and it might be used for the show. So if you go to venuscuckoldress.com, click on the podcast tab. In there is a little spot for you to press a button and you can just start recording. You have up to five minutes to share your deepest, darkest secrets with me. (laughs) And it might be used for the show. Uh, For today's show, this guy who he sent in his confessions in, I think it was like three or four separate recordings. And I've just kind of like put them together. But oh, man, it is so fucking good. I cannot wait for you to listen to this. And this for me is really fascinating, because it gives me a glimpse into people's personal stories of, you know, their origin story of how they kind of came across cuckolding, how they found that it really identified with them, how they incorporated this or brought this into their relationship with their partner and what that actually looks like. And of course, that fucking losing your cuck cherry experience is just so, oh my God, I don't know. There's something just so amazing about that. Throughout this entire thing, when I was listening to it, I had a huge smile on my face. I laughed in a few of the the spots. I was just like, man, I just, I really, really enjoy learning about this kind of thing. So listen up because this is going to be a good one. Okay. Now, before we get started, here is a quick message from Joy Mode. I think I speak for most women when I say we are so over shitty sex. We want better sex. We want a supplement that works. But unfortunately, most over-the-counter erection pill supplements contain 
unregulated chemicals suggest unsafe doses and include the risk of several other health problems. That's why I've partnered with my friends over at Joy Mode. Whether you're looking to spice up your intimate moments or increase your confidence in the bedroom, Joy Mode makes all natural and science-backed supplements dedicated to helping men perform better across their core functions. Their trademark product, the Sexual Performance Booster, is every man's solution for increased blood flow, firmness, stamina, and performance. It's like a pre-workout, but for sex. All ingredients have been assessed in peer-reviewed journals, and all ingredients have been studied and researched in humans. That's important. It comes in a palm-sized packet, just like your favorite electrolyte powder. Simply mix it with six to eight ounces of water 45 minutes before sexual activity and watch the magic happen. Redefine your intimacy and go to usejoymode.com for 20% off with the code VENUS. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code VENUS at usejoymode.com. Hi, Venus. I wanted to get on here and um, tell my story of how I became a cuck and what got me into it. Because I know everybody has their own stories and everybody's story is different. So I just wanted to say my story of how I became a cuck. And uh, before that, I just wanted to give you a shout out. Like, I love your podcast. I love what you're doing for the whole cuckolding world, size queen world. I think it's so hot. I think it's so cool that you make us all cucks feel normal and make us feel like there's other people out here that are into the same thing that we're into and we're not alone. And um, all the good info you give out, the safety tips, um, you know, tips on how to have a successful, like, healthy, cuckolding relationship for men and women. And I think that's just awesome, you know, to have your, you know, podcast, your platform to, you know, drop all these good episodes on, you know, letting us all hear what we want to hear. But, yeah, I wanted to say, like, you know, my story of how I became a cuck, um, my wife, who I'm with, um, I've been with her for 12 years. And before my wife, I never knew what cuckolding was. I never knew what a size queen was. I never, like, watched, like, you know, BBC porn or any of that. You know, like, my porn um, search history would probably be, you know, like, hot chicks, you know, the basics, you know, ass, titties. Nothing crazy. You know, I never had, like, uh, a female, like, you know, like, humiliate me about my size or any any of that stuff. So I never knew what none of this cuckolding was before I met my wife. And when I met my wife, early on in the relationship, like, right away, like, you know, within a month or so, you know, she started, like, cracking jokes on my penis size and, you know, basically humiliating me about my size. And she'll do it in front of her sister, her friends, you know, crack these jokes about my size, you know, like, you know, like pencil dick or, you know, just these like small penis jokes. And I remember I would get so embarrassed and mad. And like afterwards I would like, be so mad at her and tell her, like, dude, like, why would you do that to me? That's so embarrassing. Like, that hurts. Like, you're hurt, you're hurting my feelings. Like, that's not cool. And to her, she just thought it was funny, you know? And um, so to me, like, that wasn't, like, hot. Like, I wasn't into that. To me, it was like, dude, like, that's embarrassing. And then I didn't know what a size queen was, you know? They don't know, like, that's who she is, nor do I think she even knew that's what she is, a size queen. But I remember early on in the relationship, um, 
um you know we were having like a good sex um sex life you know early on in the relationship and um i remember one time i put on a porn and we're watching the porn and all and i remember you know the the guy he had a big dick and i remember like as we're watching the porn like right away she notices his dick and she just like i don't know if it slipped out or she didn't care about saying it but right away she was like wow he has a big dick and i was so like like mad in the inside like wow like more like kind of like accepting the fact that like she knows what big dick is and most likely that's what she wants and i can't give that to her cuz i'm below average so it just bot it just hurts you know someone like me or a cuck that like you know we're small and we know these women want big dick so i remember that was one flag that was like fuck she knows what big dick is and and then i remember like you know after that like after a couple months of being together she to- she told me that you know she's dated some black guys before so she's had you know big dick and i remember that like was a kind of a stab to my heart like oh fuck like i can't i can't compete with that like i'm you know below average i like why are you even with me if you're used to you know big dick and you know so that hurted me and then i would say maybe like after our first year going into our second year i remember she bought a dildo behind my back and i don't know if she felt guilty about it but you know she told me that she bought a dildo and i was like all right well can i see it like and i remember when she showed it to me i was like kind of like you know like it was a red flag that the dildo was black and it was you know it was big it was like 8 inches probably and to me I was like wow you couldn't you couldn't buy a average size dildo you had to buy a 8 inch dildo and it had to be black knowing that you've had black cock before is like is that what you're into is that what you prefer so I remember all these things are like kind of like you know like she's had black cock before she likes big dick she humiliates me about my penis size and it's like still I don't know what cuckolding is but right away you know our second year like all oh, this has happened to me where I've, I've never had I've never experienced this before and I've never, you know, had a female in the past ever tell me that I was, you know, small or any of that. So then I don't know, just, I guess I came up, I came past like, you know, cuckolding porn. And I remember like being like tripped out about it. But I remember just like, hey, like, that's kind of like my life. Like, I'm small. My partner prefers big dick. And this is kind of hot. Like seeing, you know, that these guys are just sitting there while their partner is getting fucked. And I don't know, that was just kind of hot to me. To me, I just felt like that was, I was in the same shoes. Like, and then I remember just, just, you know, like, being interested about it and looking up what's cuckolding and I came across like size queen what's a size queen I'm like hey like that's basically my partner like she's a size queen and I remember just like kind of like um bringing all this up to my wife well girlfriend at the time my wife but I remember bringing this up to her like just telling her like you're a size queen like you prefer big dick, you small penis simulate me all the time, like you're a size queen. And I remember like telling her about the whole cuckolding world and all this and we'll have, we'll, you know, like 
before sex, we'll have foreplay and have our fantasies and talk about the whole cuckolding and kind of have our, like, fantasies of how it would happen and all that. And I remember slowly, like, you know, like, just telling her, like, trying to convince her, like, let's do it. You know, let's like, let's actually, like, pull the trigger and do it. And she would just always tell me, like, no, you're going to regret it. You're not going to be able to handle seeing me, you know, get fucked. You know? And to me, like, that was, like, make, like making me so horny when she tells me stuff like that. Because I was, like, to me, it's more hot, like. You know, to just sit there and, like, watch her. And as the years would go by, those fantasies would just get stronger and stronger. And we'll, like, you know, every time damn near have sex, like, talk about cuckolding and, um, I remember, um, I would always tell her and, like, just do it. I promise I'm not going to get mad. Like, I swear, like, I won't just do it. Like, I will always tell her in the beginning, like, I want it to be where I walk into it. Like, I catch her doing it. I don't want to, like, do the whole, like, I was find the bull and, you know, I wanted to catch her basically, like, in the act. Okay, before I start to comment on what we've heard so far, let me just say that I fucking love this confession so so much and thank you for sending it in okay the first comment i have is it's so uncommon to have a girlfriend a partner wife whatever who engages in the small penis humiliation teasing without that being like a consented upon kink that you guys share together like it's so uncommon for a woman to actually feel comfortable doing that and not worry about like hurting you, which clearly it did hurt you or it hurt your feelings. So I just want to say like that's I rarely ever hear about stuff like that. It, in fact, it's usually quite the opposite where like, you know, he'll get turned on by stuff like that, but she's just not comfortable saying those kinds of things. So I was just surprised to hear that part. And then, oh my God, the part about the eight inch BBC tilde <laughs> cracked me up. You're like, is it was a red flag. I'm like, no, it's not. That's a fucking black flag. <laughs> red flag? That means something's bad about it. <laughs> black means she's going there and she's not coming back. <laughs> Oh my god, I almost died laughing because you were like, oh, well, why'd you have to get the 8-inch BBC dildo? Why couldn't you get something smaller? I'm like, okay, look, if this was a guy picking out his perfect, most ideal sex doll, would he get a doll with average size titties? Nah, he's gonna get the doll with like big, big titties, right? Because most guys are really into that. And of course, if you're going to get something that's like a sex toy, you want something to feel and look really different from what you're used to, you're going to go with what turns you on. And it's just going to be an exaggerated version of that, right? So it's so funny that you're all butt hurt that she chose something so big. <laughs> it's a black flag. <laughs> oh, and then it was so cute the way you were talking about how... um this that you recognized your life when you talked about like seeing or learning about cuckolding and what it is and what it looks like and stuff like that and you were like oh my god that is that's so me I'm small she's a size queen when you learned about what a size queen was and that this was an actual thing you were like oh my god that's my partner I just love that that moment where you kind of that light bulb went off and you're like oh like this is a thing and this actually like fits who I am and it fits the relationship that I'm in. And I just, I love that so much. And I love the fact that you felt comfortable enough to be able to share your fantasies with her and her share her fantasies with you and that you guys were able to to talk about it and to explore it together. And I'm not at all surprised that she was, you know, worried about doing this for real, thinking 
is this going to damage you or is this going to damage our relationship kind of thing? That's a very common response when it comes to women learning about cuckolding or thinking about doing cuckolding in real life. That's very common. So not surprised about that. Okay, next up, this is the story he sent in of his first time actually getting cucked. And when I first listened to it, I was like, oh, fuck. I had a smile on my face the entire time. It is one of the most epic first time stories that I've heard in a long time. So here it is. So a couple of weeks ago, we were at the bar that we go to a lot. You know, we're regulars, we know the bartenders, we know everybody in the bar. And um, we're sitting at the bar. We were there for like about two hours, you know, maybe on our fourth, fifth round, you know, of drinks. And um, man, I'm shaking saying this experience because I still can't believe it. Um, I'm scared to share this story too. Um, so yeah, we're there for about like two hours and all that. And like I said, you know, we know the bartender having a little short conversations with her that night. And I stepped away to the bathroom and I couldn't have been gone for like 10 minutes. And when I came back, my wife was gone. And... I'm sitting there for a bit and I seen the bartender like she kept looking at me and I'm like, you know, cause I mean, it was like kind of a busy night. So, you know, the bar where you sit at is like, it's kind of big, you know, like a lot of seats. It's a big round bar. So even though she's like, you know, serving people drinks and all that, I seen she kept like looking towards me. And after like a couple minutes that went by and my wife still, you know, she was gone. I asked the bartender, I'm like, hey, did you, um, by any chance, do you know where my wife went? Do you know if she went to the bathroom? And she just had a grin on her face. And she's like, because my wife's purse wasn't right there. I mean, I, I know she wouldn't leave her purse right there on the bar. But the bartender, she just had a grin on her face and she was like, she just left. And I'm like, what do you mean? She told you she was leaving? It's like, she left with a black guy. And I'm like, my heart dropped. I couldn't like believe it. I'm like, what do you mean? It's like, yeah, this black guy came and was talking to her. And they walked away. And I start calling my wife's phone and it's, it's off. She turned the phone off. And I'm just like, what's going on? And keep trying to call, call, phone's off. And I'm sitting right there, like, humiliated, like, do I leave? Do I stay? Is this a joke? And I left, like, 15 minutes after that. I go home. Again, I keep trying to call my wife, nothing. Her phone's off. And maybe, like, an hour or so after that, she sends me a picture of her with a black dude that I don't know. Never seen this guy. And she sends me a video of her giving him a blowjob. And she said, don't wait for me. I'm not coming home tonight. And then as soon as I keep trying, I, I, I'm trying to reply, text back to her and call her. Her phone's off again. So... I got left with that and I couldn't even sleep. I'm just thinking like, who the hell is this guy? How does she know him? Did it randomly at the bar? Did she meet him? But I'm shaking right now. Like that was a crazy, crazy experience that, man. Okay. Is that not just the best story that you've heard ever? It's definitely one of the best stories. I absolutely love and adore this confession. The fact that she took off on him at the bar. (laughs) Oh, my God. At first, I was like, oh, my God. But what? Okay. Like, 
I don't know. That's such a hardcore fantasy because like you're just basically like shock cuckolding him. And I know that this is like a big, like a really hot, hot thing because a lot of cucks, they, they fantasize about this losing control over getting cucked. Like she's just going to do this to me and I have no say in it. I have no control. This is a big fantasy. This is a lot of wank material. This is, you're going to, you know, there's so many guys rubbing one out to this whole situation. And I get it. You see this in the porn memes or captions or whatever the fuck or in the, definitely in the porn scripts and mainstream cuck porn you hear about this often i get it you guys are definitely fantasizing about this whole thing but in reality when it comes to cuckolding is probably a lot different because um <laughs> like because even with my first cuck boyfriend like we we talked about this a lot we fantasy talked about this a lot where you know i would cuck him on the first date like just shock uh shock cuckolding like oh by the way you know, so-and-so is at the door and, you know, you're going to watch or whatever, you know, that kind of thing. Like, and we got, we definitely got off on talking about that all together and, you know, fantasy talk about it and it was hot and everything like that. But in reality, when it comes to like, <laughs> whether or not you'd actually do that, you, I don't think that's a good idea <laughs> to start out that way because, she had a genuine fear of how he would react. And I, you know, you have to be sensitive around that. Like he doesn't even know how he would react for real. And, and who knows, maybe he would become violent. Maybe he, he would come, become really upset and weaponize this against her. Or um, maybe she wouldn't be safe alone with this guy who she doesn't know. And that's, that's like a big concern. But also, I mean... <sighs> You never really know how things are going to turn out. And so that's like a big, big risk to take. The whole shock cuckolding, cuck by surprise thing. Um, I know that he wanted it that way, but still, it's just not the greatest way to go about it. I mean, you just got to really fucking hope that it all turns out okay. The possibilities for things to go wrong are pretty vast. So I don't know. It's a big chance to take. But the that kind of storyline is so so hot for so many cucks and it probably has to do with the fact that it kind of like amps up the cuck angst feeling that they have in their brain where they're like fuck like she's just she's gonna do this to me and there's nothing I can do about it and it's just very uncomfortable but also very hot and everything like that I do like the fact that you know she told him about it afterwards and um, she sent him pictures and videos and stuff like that. So like, it's great that she, you know, did check in and stuff like that. But I mean, the fact that she just <laughs> fucking did that is pretty ballsy. It's pretty ballsy. But I don't know. It sounds like really, truly an epic way of popping your cuck cherry. <laughs> And the fact that he really enjoyed it that way, like there's a lot of cucks out there who would just be like, no, 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 like I have to be there. Or I have to pick out the bowl. I got to make sure that everything is just the way I want it and every everything's just the way she wants it. And I have to have control over everything. That's the usual go to when it comes to your first time actually cucking. But like the fact that he wasn't like that at all, he was just like, no, fuck it, just do it. <laughs> She's so hot. <laughs> She's just like, okay, you asked for it. Here goes. So he's just left sitting there by himself at the bar. Oh my God. It was just so good. Anyway, okay, so this next little bit is talking a little bit about going forward, what it's been like in their relationship since then, and a little bit about their dynamic. And here we go. And um after so many years of, you know, having those fantasies and begging her to do it, she's actually cooked me like twice. And um, I don't know, man. I just love it. I feel like she loves it too because it's the best of both worlds. You know, we have a healthy relationship, a good sex life. And, you know, whenever she wants to make that big dick appointment, she knows I'm okay with it. And she goes, gets it and comes back home. And, you know, I make her feel comfortable. I clean her up and. I want to hear all details about her experience and I don't know. It's just so far it's been good, you know? Um, I have yet to watch her. She's cucked me twice where 
she basically just leaves, doesn't tell me where she's going, turns off her phone. So she leaves me, you know, with my thoughts of she'll 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 turn her phone on and tell me like, hey, I hope you know I'm safe. I'm I'm out, you know. Um with a black guy and I'll be home. They'll wait up on me. And um yeah, she'll turn her phone back off and she comes back home and like shows me pictures and videos and tells me all these details and I'm like, man. I guess she's still trying to convince, you know, the guy that she sees that, you know, we're into this and, like, me being able to watch. And, yeah, I can't wait to be able to watch. But I think this whole cuckolding is just your podcast. You make us feel like we're not alone and being able to – I've never ever told nobody I'm a couple. I can't. I feel like I can't tell my friends. I feel like they'll look at me different. Or if, fam- if family found out, like me and my wife, they already talked about this. You know, we keep this in private. Um, you know, and I just feel like us. You know, like men, like we walk around like knowing we're a cuck, and you know, we can't express how we feel to other people because we feel like we'll get judged. And it's like being able to come here and jump on your confession. Um, voice message is just like means so much that we can express ourselves and you know like listen to your podcast and hear everybody's stories and I think it's just awesome like I love your podcast I love like I feel like you deserve everything and I just want to say thanks Okay, that's going to be it for this Confessions episode. Like I said in the beginning, if you want to submit your confession for the show, go to venuscuckoldress.com. Click on the page that says the podcast, and there'll be a link there for you to be able to submit your voice note. And if you are single and looking for a partner who's interested in a loving cuckolding relationship or FLR, go to venusconnections.com. It's a private matchmaking service that includes a three-week course and an interview with me. And right now, you can get a steep discount, 40% off the elite top-tier membership if you go to venusconnections.com for more information. Also, don't forget to follow me on my social media. I am at V on Twitter or X or whatever it's called now. And you can also follow me on Instagram at the Venus Cuckoldress Podcast. That's going to be it for today. We'll see you next time. Bye.